Okay. Welcome to Glamwiki Strategy 1. Um, this is actually the first of two conversations about strategy. So we're going to be sharing the same etherpad. So Stephen will be taking tomorrow's session. So everything that goes in will continue in that conversation and that discussion. So I'd encourage you to put a lot there so that the group don't have to reinvent the wheel tomorrow. Or if it's a discussion that you want to continue to be part of tomorrow, your ideas are already starting to gather there. So we have three presentations. The first one, Wikidata, a target for European semantic strategy, as being presented by four presenters. We have not been in a session with four presenters before, so it's interesting to see how they do this. Um, Valentin, Hugo, Vladimir, and Martin. Welcome. Hello, everyone. I'm Martin from Wikidata, and Vladimir Osiak to be presenting with me um, for Mototext. So the title of my presentation is Wikidata as a potential target for the uh, European. I'll start by explaining uh, what is Wikidata. European is a Europe's cultural heritage uh, portal. We aggregate uh, objects from all of all of uh, EU countries. Um, currently we reach the, the, the amount of 40 million objects at Wikidata just recently. Um, it, we face a lot of uh, data challenges, given our diversity. Uh, one of them is the large amount of references that we have uh, for places, agents, concepts, and also time spans. Um, another one is the amount of languages that we receive from all the EU countries, as you can see here. Uh, one of the main priorities of European is to improve its quality. For this, we developed and designed the EDM. Uh, which reuses uh, several uh, standards for the, from the semantic web. Um, it also gives support for contextual entities. Uh, additionally, we also rely on and uh, um, also um, uh, encourage data providers to provide their own vocabularies so that we can contribute to our data interlinking. This is the a list of uh, the vocabularies that we currently have provided to European. From these, there are uh, global um, vocabularies like we have FIA or A, <coughs> or uh, also uh, vocabularies that are given from uh, specific proper projects like uh, Bachelor's Plus, MIMO, um, or EGO. Uh, we also manage our own uh, vocabularies like this one for the Euro uh, World War I project, and that we manage in open source. Um, we also, besides the, 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 the links that, we, that we are given from the data providers, we also try to link to, uh, to external resources by ourselves. Um, this contributes for the um, contextualization of the resource beyond the uh, object description that is given to us. Um, the original process European uh, that we do for, for this automatic uh, linking uh, it's divided in three phases. And one initial phase is which is analysis, where you look at uh, the data fields that we, want, that we are uh, going to be reached. Um, we select also the rules that we applied for these uh, fields. The second phase where the linking actually happens. So we compare the, these metadata fields in, the source, in, in our uh, object description with the, the target vocabulary and then add the contextual link, links to the object uh, description. In the third phase where the augmentation happens, so we take advantage of the links to bring data from the contextual resources, and this will help augment the um, index for search. <coughs> this is the four, we divided uh, our richmond in four types, which match the, uh, the, context, the, um, the contextual resources that we uh, have or that we recognize in European. One is places, for this we use uh, geonames, uh, another is concepts, for this we use GMAT and also DVpedia. Uh, agents we use uh, DVpedia and time we use similar time. Which we, uh, by the way, we'll try to find a replacement for it since uh, currently it's not available anymore. But we still have the, the, the data for it. Uh, so here is an example for uh, an European enrichment. 
as you can see, the, for this, for example, the other provider provides only the, the, the literal in the, in the, in the auto, and we are rich by linking to the Wikipedia. So in this case for uh, Vermeer, uh, um, and this is linking for a Wikipedia um, resource, and this helps by bringing uh, several labels in different languages, for example. Uh, I'll pass the speech to Vladimir from Autotex. Thank you, Hugo. Um, I'll spend just a minute to say something about who we are. Uh, we're neither a GLAM nor a Wiki organization. We're a software company. Uh, our claim to fame is to have published the panel link data and rich visual link data and the get it as our link data. So this is basically all that we do, semantic technologies, which means representing data in semantic format, semantic data integration, and then text analysis over there. Uh, our clients are mostly in industries that have a lot of documents and a lot of data, like pharmaceuticals, life sciences, like uh, big media publishers. But I also find more and more that this is very appropriate for one institutions because the value of interlinking objects across institutions is just very, very high, very big. So, um, what is the relevance of Wikipedia for cultural heritage, semantic enrichment? Well, authority lists are a very important thing in cultural heritage, in libraries, in museums. And uh, more and more I find it that Wikipedia bear some very specialized domains. Wikipedia is really the go-to source because of its breadth and the amount of topics and, and named entities that it covers. Uh, it's not the biggest thing in the world, despite what Wikipedians may think. VIA, for example, is bigger in the areas that it covers. And uh, I think that one of the biggest values we see as an organization, as a company that deals with a lot of information is the persistent URLs that Wikipedia provides and there on they go into DVPedia, into Wikidata. In other words, it provides something that you can use to talk about a thing, a person or a painting, and you can attach facts about it from many different institutions in order to interlink the facts. Um, I did a report for one of the Rupana related projects that we participate in, the Rupana Creative. The other one is a Rupana Food and Drink. I'll have a slide about it later on. And in that report, I uh, looked at uh, data sources that are useful for name enrichment, data sources of people, basically. And here's some uh, comparisons, some numbers. So I think that's very impressive. Of course, having started from Wikipedia, Wikidata obtained a whole bunch of entities, but now there are extra entities being added to Wikidata without being in Wikipedia. And we did a count by type, so you see 2.7 million humans, 250,000 organizations. Of them, for example, there's 30,000 one organizations, um, about 9,000 museums, for example. I think all that is very valuable when one wants to speak about these things. 500,000 creative works, of which maybe about 200,000 are paintings. I think that uh, Martin will know that. I think it's a bit lower, but I'm not sure. There, if you have buildings too, that's probably the, the most of it, if you consider that a creative work. Uh, unless this counting or the types that are assigned are wrong, the buildings would not be here, they would be somewhere else. I would, building is a creative work. You can copyright it. <laughs> uh, that's with concept trees, it's difficult. A, a couple of years ago, I challenged, I guess, Europana mm. that uh, whichever rail station was in Europana, and I went, Are you collecting rail stations now? Yeah. And they said, Yeah, it's a matter of interest. No, I meant you cannot put a railway station in a computer, right? It is the description of it or the photo or something. So the, this, all of these semantic distinctions, they are very important in some places, but we don't have time to go into it. Now, just a comparison of this to some other well-known uh, well data sets. So we have this aggregation by 35 institutions, of which 20 are national libraries. 
It has 35 million personal names, 5.4 million organizations. <coughs> Even though they count them slightly differently, there's also conferences in there. So if we were to make proceedings, we would get maybe one day an entry in GND or another national library and they're on to the app. And curiously, I saw that the Communist Party of uh, Zyuganov in Russia had five Library of Congress identifiers in Wikidata. Is that by, why is it so popular in Wikidata? Turned out that the five identifiers are first of all for a department of that party, secondly for three of the Congresses of the party. But somebody in Wikidata did not make this, this distinction. To that person, the Congress and the party were the same, but they're not. Um, just comparing the size, you see that VAF is maybe 12 times bigger, which does not mean that what Wikidata or Wikipedia has is less important, because of course in VAF you have quite little geographic information about the person you have connection to works of the person or related to the person in World Cup by OCOC, so that's quite significant. The point is that uh, all of these data sets contribute to, our, to one large linked open data day, uh, space, if you will, so everything, every edition is good. We still have a whole lot of work to do in terms of co-referencing, so there's, I think, less maybe uh, just about a million of these people are cross-matched between VIAF and Wikidata, but I would expect that a lot more are in fact common. There was a recent announcement that uh, VIAF will continue the work that was started in German Wikipedia to cross-connect and to borrow data from each other. As a result, VIAF will get many more language forms, multilingual name, names of particular persons, and also about a million new organizations for people. A very important aspect of Wikidata is the multilinguality. Uh, <clears throat> so, if you saw in the slides above, Europana has to deal with about 30 languages. Well, in Wiki Wikipedia, we have maybe about 180 languages, and the multilingual coverage of an entity varies very widely. If it's a popular thing like Albert Einstein, maybe he's going to have entries in over 100 languages, but overall, it's or the average is about 2.11 articles per thing. Still, this is very good cross uh, cross language coverage that, for example, in our project on food and drink that has to do with 11 languages will help us a lot to make a search system that can work across these languages. Um, I did another report for Rupana Food and Drink and I looked, for example, at the names of Lukas Kranach and how many, in about 15 different data sets. And in Wikidata, you have him in about 44 languages. So that's fairly good. Another important point is that in Wikidata and Wikipedia, the languages are marked properly. And if you have to do semantic enrichment, you have to know the language. So that you know which of the gazette <coughs> or language lists you can match across that free text language. So here's a sample count. Uh, Wikidata has 17 A forms for Lucas Cranach, and we have 71, but only about five of them are common between the two. So you see the power of unifying these two data sets, merging them. If you click on this link, you can play with this diagram and see the difference. But basically, they break down into a Wikipedia tradition data sets, linked open data data sets. Wikidata is one of, one of these. <coughs> Freebase is something that Google bought from a company about five years ago and developed, and now it's they're going to stop working on it, but the data will be back, put back into Wikipedia. And DBpedia is another semantic or structured data rendition of Wikipedia. That's also quite important. If Wikidata is two or three years old, DBpedia is eight, eight years old. And on the, the other side, you have the library tradition data sets. VIAF is kind of the aggregation of them. ISNI starts from VIAF, but the, the change is that, or the difference is that you can get uh, an ISNI number for a modern researcher. 
I'm not much of a researcher, but I got on ice and I, I did not make it. Somebody obtained it for me because I have a paper somewhere. And uh, Yulan, uh, we worked with the Getty on the Yulan. It will be officially opened on the Turkey, the linked open data for Yulan. It's a very important data set for artists. So the po my point is that there's a lot of complementarity between libraries, GLAMs, one data sets and uh, Wikipedia data sets. Uh, the most, for me, one of the most important features of Wikidata is authority control. Uh, we started up a project called Wiki Project Authority Control. And there is, you see some shots further down, there is a very excellent tool for making co-references between Tesauri. Currently there's about 54 Tesauri loaded into that tool. And any one of us could help, especially if you're a GLAM institution, could help to interlink your identifiers to the world. Uh, if you tweet, I, I, I've never used Twitter until about two months ago, but I started using it because people write about our Getty work there and I want to support or check what's up. And so I started up a, a hashtag co-referencing. Uh, if you work in this area, this right there would be nice too. Here's an example of, uh, you saw an example of complementarity of the name forms. Here's an example of complementarity of links to Tesauri. On the left side are the different data sets that VF is connected to. That is for Lucas Krana. So these are the, they have 35, maybe 32 of them have an entry for Krana because it's, it's very important. And on the right side are the IDs that are in Wikidata. And you see that in Wikidata we have some extra quantities, I think, uh, Catalan catalog. RKD Artists, that's actually very significant. RKD Artists is not yet a member of VF, but if they decide to be, VF could get their IDs, co-referenced co IDs, through Wikidata for free. And I believe that maybe two-thirds of RKD Artists is already co-referenced to Wikidata. And of course, here are the links to commons, so you can look at images of that person or paintings by the person. And if we put this data together, the sum, the sum of all authority control is actually starting to get realized. This is the mix and match tool. 54 catalogs are currently loaded. Uh, you are, uh, you know, list of artist names, it's only co-referenced about the greenest things that are checked and are supposed to be correct. The blue are things that are automatically matched but could be wrong. Red are things that somebody checked they are not on Wikidata. And orange things that do not belong in Wikidata. Actually, that's curious for me because the, the Getty Kona which is a still relatively small list of works of art, about 10,000, I cannot really imagine which work of art is not worth putting in Wikidata. Uh, the French Senate is already fully co-referenced, but it's probably about three or 400 entries, that's why. Some of these Tesauri are 200,000 entries. <laughs> or over uh, a million, we just added the... the TGN, 1.2 million. Yeah, the Getty location uh, names ones uh, was over a million. 1.2 million, yeah, so but 800,000 800, of that is the United States, yeah. uh, North America. Um, here is an example of making co-references. So you can just look up and this is out of the British Museum of Tesaurus. It has about 135,000 <coughs> that is not linked to anything. I think it would be a lot of value to the British Museum if people like us go ahead and link their things to the world. And they are used, the identifiers quite nicely in Wikipedia through boxes like that. Now, in this food and drink project, our task as some semantic technology companies to make a classification of the 50,000 or so objects that will be contributed. But then I thought, 
Well, let's look inside the European what already exists. Uh, I think that there is maybe another 300,000 objects that are relevant to, to food and drink in Europa. I did uh, some keyword searches, only about 20 keywords, and I caught about 70,000 objects. So now the question is, how do you define that something is related to food and drink? How do you circumscribe such a broad, broad topic? And I've looked at about 20 data sets it's in this report here, food and drink classification scheme. And I got some terms here and there. For example, in Wikipedia itself, you have 6.6 thousand foods with their ingredients with an info box. But there is many, many, many hundreds of thousands more that don't have an info box. And uh, so my estimate would be that across all of the Wikipedias, which have about 12 million things, maybe about 10% or 5%, so that would mean 1 million things that are related to food. And this is what we're going to try to use for our classification. So in other words, if you have an object that's related to maize or foie, which is <coughs> an ugly paste made from roots, eaten somewhere by the wild, wild uh, people in, I forget where, uh, you have a term for that in Wikipedia. Uh, here this fluffy image that you cannot see, but if you click on this link, you can interact with it and zoom and take a look what's up there. It's just two levels of the food and drink category hierarchy. Of course, the problem with Wikipedia categories is that they're very messy. Uh, there's no semantics when one category is put as a subcategory of another. But we, we work with messy data and large data and try to make sense. Now, so bread is one of the reasons why Wikidata is important to Rupana as a source of entries to connect to. The other thing is that it's very easily accessible. There's a number of APIs that you can use to connect it, to connect to it. Uh, it's openly available. It's also available in RDF, which is the semantic data format. Uh, this is being queried with the language called Sparkle, but there is also the WDQ, Wikidata Query tool. <coughs> One important aspect is how the data is organized. And uh, on this point, I think that Wikidata has an excellent property proposal process. Before a property is submitted in the Wikidata model, there is voting on it, and you describe what you want it for, where is it going to come from, what sort of robot task can be attached to it. In contrast, for the classes, there's no such process. And currently, there's about 16,000 classes, of which two-thirds don't even have five instances. So I think some reorganization would be needed for the classes. Here's for the properties. So this is the metadata that you sorry, collect about the property. This here, for example, for matter URL, says that when you get the value of this property, U1 identifier, uh, which is property number P245, you can use this URL and put the number here instead of $1, and you get to the site that describes that thing. Uh, quite important are these constraints, constraint checking. So, for example, they suggest, the exceptions of those suggest things that either should be merged in ULAM or should be broken apart in Wikidata and vice versa. And here's, by the way, how I found how fun about the, the Communist Party being very popular with Wikipedia. So mm -hmm. Actually, with the Library of Commons. Um, another way that Wikidata can be used by Arupana, apart from the persons or other thesauri, is the objects themselves. So projects like the Summer Row paintings, they describe paintings in some detail. It is still not the level of detail that an art researcher would need to work with, like a big deal was made a couple of days ago that there's still no measurements. But gradually that data model is being enlarged. And again, one of the important points is to have common URLs that you can use to connect. Because there's many cases where pieces from the same work, let's say manuscripts, are in two different institutions. Or let's say pieces from a triptych are broken down into different, and you want to 
cross connect. <coughs> um, this here is the model of the mapping to the seed ontology that we did together with the British Museum. So this is the level of detail that an art researcher might want to get into. These are very specific details about events that happened to the object, who was involved, who influenced that. So questions or assertions about attribution of a painting could be expressed in that kind of ontology. I don't believe Wikidata is ever going to get into that level of depth, but still having the basic what, when, who, and where is very useful. Having a hundred properties for every painting over half a million or one million paintings is a huge treasure trove of information. You could then do research on styles, materials, influences between painters, topics. Um, and a final slide, Antoine thought that might be a bit provocative, so we moved it at the very end. <laughs> I'm with love with Wikidata, but I have to admit to cheating a bit on the side. <laughs> uh, actually, I started playing with both last November, but there is, a, there is a lot of depth in both of these data sets. There is a strong community behind each one of them. The approach to structured data that they take is very different, but it, both of them work with Wikidata, or they, they stand with, they are the stepchildren of Wikidata. Uh, whereas, sorry, the stepchildren of Wikipedia. Whereas Wikidata wants to be the master of the simple facts of Wikipedia, DVpedia does a different thing. It does not master information, it only extracts information. But that, that extraction framework is very powerful and elaborate. And so therefore you have a lot more facts in DVpedia than currently in, in uh, Wikidata. And I really would <coughs> love to see the two communities getting together. And a final comment on GLAMI involvement. We had this session about how GLAMS can work or should work with Wikipedia. And actually it was kind of strange because a very big museum like the Rice Museum complained that it's hard to get stuff into Wikidata. You get blocked, you get disputes, you get... Whereas I see a... Right, Wikipedia. Yeah. <laughs> I see a completely different problem and it is to try to get GLAMS from smaller countries for example, from a backward country like Bulgaria, and I said it as a patriot. <laughs> um, in this case, in food and drink, I asked the 20 or so partners that provide content, if there's an important concept or event that your cultural objects refer to, would you be willing to enter it in Wikipedia or Wikidata? And a Polish lady said, uh, no, we have no time for that, or we don't have enough people. But uh, an important point is that it's a lot easier to enter things in Wikidata than in Wikipedia because uh, you're entering a lot less just the dry facts. And because, as Martin said yesterday, it's uh, the, wild west, the Wild West still. I mean, it's easy to stake a territory and enter something about something. You don't, don't have to argue it with a bunch of other people whether you are entering it the right way or not. So if that Polish museum has artifacts about this very colorful and nice Polish tradition that's related to Easter, well, they better make an entry for it and connect it to the Easter food-related things so that we can do a semantic search to find it as an egg-related food and to find it as something connected to Easter. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.